The challenge is when we get out of that space. And so the last decade, I've been working in, with a lot of different other types of waste streams and trying to figure out what type of barriers work well. So for example, there's our MSW. It tends to be typically in the middle there. But then we end up with other things. So I, one of my, I do a lot of work with the Department of Energy and low-level rad waste leachates. They fit down here. They're really not too concentrated, but really divalent. They use a lot of Portland cement grouts uh, to, for stabilize their waste forms. They got a lot of calcium, they got a lot of magnesium in their, in their solutions. They have virtually no sodium, no ammonia, all right? They're really divalent. So low level waste leachates, con most conventional GCLs won't work, all right? Uh, bauxite liquor, anybody do any work for aluminum refining? We, we do a lot of work for Alcoa around the world for uh, and bauxite liquor facilities. So if anybody do frack water ponds? Do any of that? For um, oil and gas, EMP? Flowback water ponds for uh, uh, hydraulic fracturing, where we've got large volumes of water, tend to be up on that. They're briny. They're real, these are brines. Uh, incinerator ashes. We find inc incinerator ash landfills have very strong leachates. Um, some hazardous waste leachates way up on that far end, really concentrated. Uh, conventional GCLs won't work. CCP leachates. Uh, we're finding that actually in almost all CCP leachates require a different type of GCL. Conventional GCL won't work. These are, I, I made this graph actually about a year ago originally, and I, I, I haven't modified it specifically to make a point. That was what we considered extreme CCP leachates a year ago. They were up around one molar. They were from like trona ash being used, for, generated from trona treatment for off gas from power plants. This moved over a log cycle in the last year. We get five molar leachates from power plants uh, in my lab regularly now. Or we're taking blowdown waters, mixing it with ash to create a solid waste, to put in a disposal facility. The leachate's five molar. That's a brine. That's like really concentrated salt water. Yeah, but it takes a different type of liner for that. And then some mining projects, for example, heap leach products on the other end that are, tend to be very acidic. So essentially everything that fits outside the MSW range often requires a different product. Not always, but often. Uh, just some examples here. This is bauxite liquor, uh, hydraulic conductivity just versus poor volumes of flow. What we would typically get with tap water this is in meters per second. This is an Australian project, so we're working in SI units. Three times 10 to the minus nine for DI water or tap water. Bauxite liquor, orders of magnitude more permeable. Bauxite liquor is, uh, bauxite process for making aluminum is brute force chemistry. You take bauxite uh, ore, you grind it up, you put it in a vessel, you put in one molar sodium hydroxide with pH 14, you stir it and you heat it and you drive off the aluminum. It's brute force chemistry. And the residual from that is, is one molar pH 14 liquid. It's really strong. Uh, can't maintain, manage that with a conventional GCL. Tronash leachate. The first time I worked with tronash leachate, I was kind of shocked about how strong it was. Being used at a lot of power plants now to meet uh, SOX emissions requirements. Tronash leachate is what we get with DI water with a conventional GCL. This is what we get with a trona leachate. And then uh, uh, more broadly, we did a study recently for the power industry looking at hydraulic conductivity of, of uh, um, GCLs to different uh, waste streams that they were generating. And even the typical CCP leachates, which are in here, had hydraulic conductivities that were in the medium 10 to the minus 8 to low 10 to the minus 7 range. And the coal ash rule requires the GCL to have a hydraulic conductivity less than three times 10 to the minus nine, roughly, centimeters per second, if you look at the rule carefully. So almost all of these uh, data points correspond to conditions where a conventional GCL won't work. So we need something different. And that's where we got into working on polymer, polymer-modified GCLs and what actually what I call today bentonite polymer composites.